go live. I'm excited about tonight. So let's get ready to get started here. So excited about what uh, God has been doing in our, just waiting for a few people to, to jump in here. So excited about what God has been doing as we are studying the Word of God together, watching phenomenal results, and uh, we are excited about that. And uh, so we just, we're just giving everybody a few minutes uh, to jump in here. And uh, once, th once we do that, we're going to get started, and we are going to rock and roll with it. Uh, so it's been a good week. Uh, God's been faithful. We have been busy. We're working on some things, and uh, we, you know, it's, it's, it's always good to be active and working faithfully in the kingdom of God, man. That, that, is, a, that is a phenomenal thing to be doing. And so we, we're just looking forward to seeing what God is going to do tonight for us. And so we want to get ready to get started. And uh, as we do so, I want to invite those that are coming in to go ahead and uh, uh, join us. Go ahead and, and uh, share this message as you come in. Uh, make sure that the, uh, you let, uh, let people know that we are live and uh, that we are out here tonight teaching the Word of God. And uh, we welcome you to, to Kingdom Discipleship with uh, Kingdom Covenant Connection Church, Mount Pleasant, Texas. I want to get it tonight into the Word of God. I, want, I don't want to spend a long time. I do want to announce uh, publicly for the first time that on August the 12th, we're going to be having a back-to-school event uh, in Mount Pleasant um, at, um, I just forgot the name of the park, uh, but it's going to be at the park over off of Edwards in Mount Pleasant. Uh, at the large park over there in Mount Pleasant. I'll get the exact uh, uh, name of it and everything and get it to everybody. But, y'all, we want to get ready. We want to get ready to get into it. And uh, uh, I'm looking for, looking for my, my regulars to come on in here in just a few more minutes. Uh, but either way, we're going to get ready to get started. Y'all, let's pray, and we'll go into it. Father, thank you so much for this time to gather around your word. Now, Lord, as we do so, we're asking you that you will speak to us and that you will speak through us, and that you will teach us how to be your people in word and in deed. We just thank you and we praise you for your word. Make it now a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway, and cause us, O oh God, to be your people in word and in deed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Listen, we want to get, we want to get started tonight. And uh, we want to get, go back into where we were last week. Uh, we want to get back into this. And we want to go back into what we were last week. We had a phenomenal study in the Word of God last week, man. Just absolutely phenomenal. And I want to, I want to pick it back up and I want to keep teaching. Here's what we've been doing. We've been teaching on prayer. And we've been, we've been, we've been talking about the necessity of prayer. We talked a little bit in our study about um, why we should pray. We tried to even a little bit to, def to define what prayer is. We talked a little bit about prayer is that place in which we uh, express with honesty um, our needs, our concerns, our pains, our joys with the Lord. We go before God and we, and we, we go without pretense. Uh, we go before God and we simply say to the Lord, this is what it is. But but even more than that, when we go before God in prayer, y'all, we're not going solely to request and to ask for stuff, but rather we go before God because we we simply want the Lord. And that's so vitally important to us as we are endeavoring to uh, learn what prayer is. That's so vitally important that we learn that we don't just go to God because we want to treat God like some cosmic Santa Claus, but we go to God because we simply want God. Uh, the Wynans used to have a song that said, the gift without the giver, what good is the gift without the giver? And so we, that's what we go to God doing. We go to God in prayer. That prayer is that, is that conversation piece between us and God. We go before God and we simply say, okay, Lord, what is it uh, that you want from me? And it's not so much what I want from God. Now, last week we picked up in, in Matthew chapter six and we started talking about what how to pray. 
and we started laying it out on the line. Um, how do we pray? How do we pray? What, how, do we, how do we pray and, and what do we, how do we go about doing it? Um, and so last week we talked about, first of all, we, we started off with, in Matthew chapter 6 and we, we spent some time talking about how Jesus says that we're not to practice our religion in front of people. Religion, by the way, is while people will condemn it, religion is the system by which people express their faith. So, so that's important. Every person, every person who has faith is religious. But but there's there's a positive to religion and there is a negativity to religion. And what people tend to do is they they focus upon that negative of religion so as to say, well, it's not necessary or it's something to be avoided. But the reality is, though, the reality is, though, it, it is, in fact, not something that we need to avoid. Rather, it is something that we need to embrace because religion literally is that system by which that system by which we live out our faith. And so what Jesus says, and I'll have to pause y'all for just a minute because I just realized I did not put my phone on, on do not disturb. So give me just a minute. I'll be right back. All right, here we go. I'm back. All right. So it, it took me just a minute uh, to get back over here, but I'm back. All right. So here's the thing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand uh, that, that, that we don't need to be showy when we're trying to pray. Uh, I want to point this out. The, the Bible says in Matthew chapter six, in Matthew chapter six, it simply says this. It says, it says that when you go into your room, shut the door. It says, and when you go into your room and shut the door, pray to your father who is present in that secret place. Now that's important because when we go in to pray, we're going into our private time to spend time with God and God alone. There is one person in prayer uh, that we are trying to impress. One person that we're trying, and, and it's really not even so much that, that we're trying to impress God. As I said last week, it's more we're going in to be impressed of God, that we want, that we want to know something about God that we have not known. And, and, so, um, and so, we, so, we, so we look into the scripture and it goes on to say, and it says, and when you pray, don't pray like the hypocrites. Because they said they love to stand praying uh, with big fancy words and trying to show everybody how powerful they can be and how eloquent they can be and how amazing they can be. They, they got it. And so I talked last week about how we have been fooled uh, by the by the by the by the by the by the foolishness of church. And we and we just simply have been taught that we have to be eloquent when we go in to talk to God. No, we have to be sincere when we go in and talk to God. And the Bible says that our father who sees in secret, he will reward us openly. And so we have to understand this, ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand this, that what God is looking for with us is very simply this, a broken and a contrite spirit who will come in. Now, now, now Matthew, get Jesus in Matthew's gospel gets into this thing. And I want you to look at it. Matthew chapter six, get your Bible and go out there and look at it. Matthew chapter six, Jesus now begins to say, and when you pray, he says, pray like this. And then he begins to say this, our father who is in heaven, come reading from the common English Bible here, our father who is in heaven, uphold the holiness of your name. And, and this is where we stopped last week. Uphold the holiness of your name. That literally what he says is the reason we pray, watch this, is for his name's benefit. That's what he's saying. That we pray not so that we can receive, watch this, but so he can be exalted. We don't pray so we can be healed solely, but we pray for healing so that when we're healed, his name is exalted. Uphold the holiness of your name. It, it literally means this, as, as I heard uh, Pastor Maurice Watson say, that the reason God does what God does is because his name is on the line. And if we understand that his name is on the line, you can't brag about God. You can't, you can't exclaim about God. You can't make proclamations about God and then God fail. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It, it's, almost like, it's almost like a child... Uh, um, who, who stands and boldly says, my daddy will take care of this. My daddy will take care of this. My daddy will take care of this. And then when it's time to take care of it, daddy not going to come through. No, there's not a real father that I know of who would not in that situation do 
everything within their power to make sure that they come through. And so and so what, what we're talking about here, what we're talking about here is very simply this. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about we're talking about simply honoring his name, understanding that when we lift his name, when we exalt his name, when we make sure that his name is what's 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 promoted, then he will honor his name. You, you understand? Because we carry his name. We, we, we represent his name. And so what we want to do is when we go into prayer, it's not just closing the prayer in the name of Jesus. I want to be clear about this tonight. I want to be clear about this tonight. And I honestly don't know how many people are out there. I can't see y'all. But, but, but what I'm saying tonight is if we, what, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we not just pray it in the name of Jesus. We want to make sure that what we're doing is to represent the name of Jesus. That's where we stopped last week. And it got good to me at the end. But what I want to do tonight is I want to go to the next part. Watch what he says. Our father who is in heaven, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom so that your will is done on earth as it's done in heaven. Now, this is a submission piece. And this and this, as Pastor Danny Wegman would say, we might want to we might want to buckle our seatbelts for just a few minutes because this might get bumpy right through here. Because what we're talking about now is a submission piece. Because watch this. When we go to God to pray, we're really not going to ask for our will. We're going to ask for God's will. Now, this is what prayer. This is what we're doing when we pray. We make sure we understand. Notice this is all about him. So far, it ain't got nothing to do with us. Uphold the holiness of your name. I'm asking this because your name is on the line. I'm asking you to do something about this because I boasted about you. Uh, it's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they get ready to go into the fire in front of them. Scripture says this, that they get ready to go in. And, and, and the king says, who is the God that can deliver you out of my hand? They respond to say this. Listen, we don't know for sure that God will or won't do it. But even if, even if he don't, even if he don't, we're not bound down. We serve the Lord only because now watch this. They brag about him. They exalt him. They talk about who he is. And then God responds. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you hear me tonight. The bottom line is now that's about him. But the next part is also about him. We pray submitted totally to the will of God. Now, the will of God. How shall I say this it is difficult to know sometimes. Now, I know that there are people who will say, listen, watch this. There are people that will say, but wait a minute. If I pray the scriptures, then I'm praying the will of God. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. Can we please go read that scripture for just a minute? And I'm not trying to mess up nobody's theology, but I believe that if we're going to make the Bible work, we got to do it right. Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah chapter 53. This is what it says. Who can believe what we have heard? And for whose sake has the Lord's arm been revealed? He grew up like a young plant before us, like a root from dry ground. He possessed no splendid form for us to see, no desirable appearance. He was despised and avoided by others, a man who suffered, who knew sickness well. Like 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 someone from whom people hid their faces. He was despised and we didn't think about him. Then it said it was certainly for our sickness that he carried. And it was it was certainly our sickness that he carried and our sufferings that he bore. But we thought him afflicted, struck down by God and tormented. He was pierced because of our rebellion. Now, we have to understand when we see sickness here, people tend to relate that to. Excuse me, that people tend to relate that to physicality. It's not really talking about physical sickness. Now, although I believe personally that physical healing is included in the package, but the text contextually is not talking about physical sickness. Contextually, it is talking about soul sickness, that what he died to do is to heal our soul. He, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised because of our iniquity. He was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed because of our, our crime. He bore the punishment that made us whole by his wounds. We are healed. Now, when we read it in context, we understand that that's what he's talking about. He's talking about he's talking about the sins that went from Adam all the way up through the end of time, that what he died for 
are the sins that we committed. Now, that does not mean that our other sicknesses are not included. But watch this, ladies and gentlemen. When we read this, if we, even if we read it and we say, even if we read it and we say, but he's talking about physical healing. So this is where I see people teach it. I see people and they teach it and they say, you know what? So he has bought your healing. Therefore, everybody is healed. And the critic comes along and says, OK, if that's the case, then why does pe why do people die? And then we pause and we say, well, they must not have had faith. But I argue with that, be honest with you, because I've seen people of tremendous faith. In fact, if you want to read scripture, uh, here's one for you. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, around verse 13, it goes on. It lists Abel, it lists Enoch, it lists, Enoch, it lists Noah, it lists Abraham, it lists Sarah. And then all of a sudden it says th verse 13, all these people died in faith without receiving the promises. But they saw the promises from a distance and welcomed them. So, so watch this. These great people of faith had faith, but they didn't receive what they were waiting on. That's what it says. Now, I know some people are going to have some problems with that. And they're going to say, no, nah, Reverend, you take it. No, 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 no. I'm reading the Bible and taking it seriously. Because what, they, what it says is that not, it, here's the bottom line. Here's the, here's the bottom line. And I know some people that, that would get on here tonight, they're going to they gonna get off uh, and they go, they're going to say, well, I'm, I'm teaching bad doctrine. I'm not. I'm teaching Bible. H here's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes God heals and sometimes God doesn't. That is the reality. Sometimes God does heal. But sometimes, watch this. We don't know the will of God. Let's read Bible. Let's read Bible. Isaiah uh, chapter 57, I believe. Let's go see. Isaiah chapter 57, I believe. Let me see. Uh, I may have, may have written down the wrong chapter, but, but let's go see. Um, and that's all right for me to pause, I hope. Um, I, just need to, I just need to verify my, my verses here. Uh, Isaiah 55, I'm sorry. Isaiah 55, it just hit me. Isaiah 55, watch what it says. Isaiah chapter 55 and beginning in verse 8. OK, it says my plans aren't your plans, nor are my ways or your ways. My ways, says the Lord, just as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my plans than your plans. Just as the rain and the snow come down from the sky and don't return there without watering the earth, making it conceive and yield plants and providing seed to the soil and food to the eater. So is my word that comes from my mouth. It does not return to me empty. Instead, it does what I want and accomplishes what I intend. That literally what the text just said to us is this. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, please understand that God's way of thinking is not our way of thinking. God does not think like we think. So when people are trying to say and they and we have good intentions. But when we say, you know what? I know the will of God. No, no, we don't. If, you, if we know 100 percent the will of God, then we are equal with God. We are always subordinate to God. That God, Watch this. That means we've reached the level of playing field, the, the same level as God. Now, I hope y'all hear me tonight. We've reached that level where God is. And, and let me just let me just suggest this, that that we have to understand it's God and it's us. Even if you say, well, we were made in the image of God. Psalm 8 says Psalm 8. Simply says this, when God, when David starts talking to God about human, he simply says this, what is man? Let me flip over here to it. Psalm eight, David says in relation to mankind and God, he said, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than, than that. You made your glory higher than heaven from the mouth of nursing bays. You have laid a foundation because of your foes in order uh, to stop vengeful people. When I look at the skies, at, the, at your finger, what your fingers made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place. What are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to? That you made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. You have let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet. Now, everything under their feet. Watch this is not everything like it is with God. And I want us to be clear about this. Y'all, we have been made righteousness in Christ Jesus. But here is the reality. God is God and we are not. So 
Watch what he's saying. Your way of thinking ain't my way of thinking. I was talking to my class at school at Jarvis the other day, and we were talking about this. And, and, and I, was, I was asking them, I, I drew a road up on the board. I drew a road, two lines and then jagged lines in between and made a road up on the board. And here's what I, here's what I asked. I said, I said, here you are, or here's what I said. Here you are at the beginning of the road. Here's where your parents are on the other end of the road. Now, you don't understand what's coming down that road. You don't know what all you're going to encounter, but they do because they've already been where you're trying to go. The scripture says God knows the end from the beginning. Miles Monroe said it this way. God does not start a thing and then finish it. Rather, God finishes a thing and then backs up and starts it. So the reality is God sits in a position that we don't sit in, which means he knows something that we don't know. So when we go to God in prayer, Matthew 6 says, we simply pray this. We says, we say, bring in your kingdom so that your will is done. Your will. Well, what is his will? I don't know always. Watch this. But that's why I pray, because this is not only a level of submission. I'm, I'm saying I'm submitted to your will. Kind of like Jesus in, in Matthew's gospel, uh, Matthew's gospel, when he goes into the garden of Gethsemane and the Bible said, just as Jesus is praying, he says in Matthew 26, verse verse 39, then he went a short distance further and fell on his face and prayed, my father, if it's possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not what I want, but what you want, because he now is submitted. King James Version says, your will be done. Please hear me tonight. Please hear me tonight. Please hear me tonight. And unfortunately, I don't know who's there. I can't see you. I don't I don't see you tonight. But, but the bottom line is, th 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 hear me. This is important. This is important. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand this, that what God is saying to us is as we pray, we go to God saying, I'm submitted to your will. Now, your will may not be the way that I want it, mm -hmm. but I'm submitted to your will. That, watch this. I am submitted to whatever you want to happen. If, if, watch this. If I, if I get my daddy, my daddy, yes, Lord, my daddy, my daddy was sick with cancer and he taught me something in the midst of him being sick. This is what I heard him say. I was talking to him and I was like, I was trying to encourage him. And dad all of a sudden stopped me. He said, it's going to be all right. He said, God's got this. And then he said this. He said, if I live, I'm going to live for Jesus. But if I die, I'm going to be with Jesus. That is so incredibly critical because what he was saying is I'm praying for healing. But if I don't get what I'm praying for here, it's going to be all right because I trust him with everything. I trust him with my life here. I trust him with my eternity there. And so he says, pray that the kingdom of God come. Watch this. So he's saying there is a submission aspect. But now keep looking. He said, bring in your kingdom so that your will is done. Watch this. So that your will is done. What's the will of God? What is the will of God? Well, we don't always know, do we? Here's what we do know. We, watch this. We cast our, by faith, and that's what this says. I'm not only submitted to God, watch this, but I am completely in trust of God. Because I, I, I literally am saying in prayer, Father, I approach this from the, I know what I want. I know what I want. Now, I'm getting ready to take us to a passage of scripture that we need to see. I know what I want. I know what I want. And I'm praying for it. I'm asking you. I'm asking you to do this. But if you don't, that's that's the Garden of Gethsemane prayer. I'm asking you to do this. But now, if you don't. Now, here's what's amazing. Jesus is God. That's what we know. Jesus was God. That's what we know. He was he was the incarnate God. That's what we know. Here's what's amazing. The incarnate God, while he's on earth, goes to God and said, Jesus, the son of God, goes to God and says to God, said, Lord, if there's any other way. Now, hold on. Don't miss that. If there's any other way that, that, that I can keep from dying, let it happen. But if not, let your will be done. Now, hold on. Don't you miss this. You mean to tell me that we have the audacity, as Freddie Haynes would say, the unmitigated gall to, to suggest that we know 100 percent the will of God. But Jesus, the Lord, the Savior, went to him and said, if it be possible. If it's any other way, 
Now, I know there are going to be some people who are going to, who are going to inbox me and say, well, preacher, let me show you what that really says. No, I'm telling you what it says. If, if there be, he, he expresses the way we are supposed to express it. And that is, watch this, a submission to the will. Watch. But an absolute trust in God with the outcome of it. That remember his name is. That's where we started last week. His name is on the line. And since his name is on the line, I can now trust him with how Ever it turns out, God, glory to God. I can trust him with whatever comes out of it. Yes, I believe I'm healed. I be with this eye, y'all, let me tell you something. I believe 100% that before too long, this joke is going to come over. I believe that with everything within me. But let me be clear where I am with this. If, I, if it don't, I trust him with the outcome. I trust him with the outcome. I trust him. I trust him. I trust him. And the reason I know I can trust him is because I've already tested him. I've already seen what he does. I've already seen how he works. I've already seen how he responds. I've already seen how he does. Since, since I know he does this, I can trust him, can't I? So, so this is what he's saying. He is simply saying this. He says, he says we, want to, we want to now synchronize our will with his will. All right? We want to synchronize his, our will with his will. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Watch. Because when we understand this, uh, when we understand this, it changes the way we pray. When we understand it, we, it changes the way we, we pray. Psalm 37, watch what it says. Uh, let's start back in verse one. Don't get upset over evildoers. Don't be jealous of those who do wrong. Because they will fade fast like grass. They will wither like green vegetables. Trust the Lord and do good. Live in the land and farm faithfulness. Enjoy the Lord <laughs> and he will give what your heart asks. Now, I'm going to read another verse, but listen to what he just said. Enjoy the Lord. Remember when we started teaching on this, we were talking about the fact that prayer, first John chapter five, that this is the this is the this is the confidence that we have in our relationship with God, that the more we get connected to God. The more we unite with God, the more we and God become synchronized in our thoughts and in our actions. And God becomes our ultimate desire and his will becomes our ultimate desire. Watch what the text says, that if you enjoy the Lord, if we synchronize with the Lord and, and, and God's desire becomes our desire. That's what this says. It says, then God will give us the desire of our heart. Now, wait a minute. We can't miss that. We can't miss that. Because what he just said is, look, my son can ask me to drive. And he may not get to drive. But when I've already got it purposed in my heart that I want him to learn to drive. Because his desire is my desire. And my desire is his desire. Now, when he asks, he get what he want because he's he's lined up with what I want. Oh, I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear. God, let that be clear. We have to understand that. That literally what he is saying is that we, brothers and sisters, have to line up with the will of God. And when we line up with the will of God, what literally happens is the Lord begins to give us our heart's desire. Why? Because our heart has now synchronized with God's heart. Now, watch what he said. This is how you do it. Verse, four, verse five in Psalm 37. He said, commit your way to the Lord. Trust him and he will act. I like that. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust him and he will act. This is literally what it's saying. Ladies and gentlemen, he's saying this, that if we will connect our heart to God and if and if, and if God's way literally is our way, if God's thought is our thought, meaning God, I trust you with this. I am submitted to this. I am not moving from what you want. I will rejoice in what you want. I will, I will, I will proclaim what you want. I'll be happy with what you do. And I ain't going around complaining because it don't go the way I want it to go. When we do that, here's what text says. Text says, when we commit our way unto the Lord, that's our heart, by the way. When we commit our way unto the Lord, it simply says this and trust him. He will act and will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and your justice uh, like the high noon. Go back to Matthew six. I'm almost done. Watch what he says. He says, your kingdom come. I got to cover one more, one more thing. Your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Now, the reason this is important is because what we're talking about is submission. 
We're talking about trust. Watch this. And now we're talking about praying that what is going on in heaven will be mirrored on earth. That's important. That our prayer is that we see what God is seeing in heaven be seen among God's people on the earth. This is so vitally critical. I'm almost done. This is so incredibly critical. Watch. Um, this is not talking about doing some foolish stuff to make it think that ever that heaven is coming to earth. New Jerusalem ain't coming down here until Jesus come. We need to understand that. Don't let nobody fool you on this. New Jerusalem is not coming down until until the Lord come back to get us. But what we can see is allow God to be the king. That's what it's saying. And I'm done. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. That's one of the reasons we we named our church that kingdom. We have to understand that kingdom king. Talking about a sovereign. Talking about dumb. It's talking about dominion. It's talking about the place of the sovereignty, the sovereign rule of a king. It is literally saying this, ladies and gentlemen, that you and I are a part of the kingdom of God. We are part of the place where God's rule and God's word is authoritative, that what God wants is what happens. What God wants is what we see. So he says this, reflect on earth what is going on in heaven. Do down here what you're doing up there. But what is he doing up there? We don't need to miss this. What he's doing up there is he's commanding the angels. They move at his beck and his call. He sits on the throne and everything bows down before him. N nobody in heaven feels like they are above God. They don't make moves without God. They, they flow in, in, in step with what God's want. That's why heaven is heaven and earth is not. Watch. So what we're praying now is God. Ooh, God help me. Will you make me come on, commit your ways unto the Lord? Will you make me us to be in such a way that we now are committed to your ways to the point to where we reflect on earth the way we would be if we are in heaven? Now, that's pretty good, y'all. I hope y'all hear what I just said, that we will reflect on earth what we would be if we were in heaven. So what he is saying to us is simply this. Ladies and gentlemen, when we pray, here's the three things tonight. Number one, we want to be submitted to him. We're saying, OK, you're king. I ain't. I'm going to let you run it. Number two, we are saying we're cool with whatever you want. Not what I want, but what you want. Next week, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the next phase. That's the one that we're so much, so much familiar with. Now, tonight, it, this may be a little uncomfortable for us because because what's this? Um, we may not always get what we want. We may not always get what we want. It, it may be it may be that God decides we pray for healing and then death comes. There's a biblical answer from that, though. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that's OK. That's OK, too, because people die. That's the result of Adam and Eve. That's the reality. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law, but we have not been redeemed from the death in the body. And so we go before God. Number one, submit it to God. Number two, we go before God saying, OK, your way. Whatever you want. We, we, we understand that you think differently from us. You see it differently from us. And then what we do, watch this. In the final analysis, we begin to say, God, let heaven be mirrored on earth, not just in what we want. Watch this. But in who we are. And when we begin to pray that we begin to line ourselves up with him. And then it says he will give us the desires of our heart. And next week. Next week, we're going to get into that. I hope this message has been a blessing to y'all tonight. I didn't see y'all. Now, I went on to talk the lesson. I hope I hope y'all were there. I can't see y'all tonight for some reason. I don't know. Maybe my internet connection is messing up, but I'm hoping that I saw you. I hope y'all out there. Listen, I want to invite you Sunday morning to be with us at Kingdom Covenant Connection Church in Mount Pleasant, Texas, 2504 uh, West Ferguson Road. Uh, we want to invite you to come and be with us. Uh, 1045 Sunday morning. We start at 1045. We want to encourage you to be there. We've got a powerful word from the Lord that we want to lift up and we want to encourage you to come and be with us. But also if the Lord should so incline you, we are right now endeavoring uh, to do a couple of things. We are seeking to become 501c3 certified, but we are also in the process of putting together and planning uh, and executing a back to school live event on August the 12th in Mount Pleasant in the park. And we want to encourage you, go out to give Lafay. Go out to give the fire and sow a seed into this ministry. Y'all, we're a young ministry, but I promise you we're, being, we're doing big things. And we want to make a mark, as Creflo Dollar used to say, that cannot be erased. We want to be kingdom people. 
with a kingdom mindset. And I would encourage you to go out to Give Lify, look up the Kingdom Covenant Connection Church and just sow your seed into this ministry. Or you can send a check, send it to 5455 um, Alpha Road, Suite 218, um, 75240 uh, is, is the zip code. And I want, or 75204. I want to encourage you to send it. Uh, and we will, we will make sure that it goes into the account. We'll make sure it's used for the purpose that it was given. Um, I tell people this and people laugh. I don't take a salary from the church. It's not because I can't. We, we, we're okay. But the reality is, y'all, I do what I do because I love God's people. And uh, maybe maybe we'll do salary later or some such. But what we're doing, y'all, is trying to touch people's lives. And we want to encourage you to come and be a part of what we're doing at Kingdom Covered Connection Church. Listen, I'm done for the night. Next week, y'all, we're going to get back into this. I can't wait to get to next week because that's the part that's going to get us all excited. Y'all, share this message. Send it out. Make sure that a thousand people at least receive this. And let's go forth and let's begin to pray. Before we go, we want to pray for a young lady uh, who's in the hospital tonight. She was rushed to the hospital. A uh, young lady, her mother's name is Melissa Tompkins. Uh, this young lady's name is Haley. Uh, she's a very young lady. Um, young, young child and she was rushed to the hospital and we don't quite know yet what's going on with her uh, but I watched Sunday morning as a, ma- as a lady came to church she had just had uh, surgery uh, on her back and during the middle of service God healed her and she was running around in the church I believe God can touch this young lady and we're going to pray God pray to God right now as we go let's pray Father thank you so much for your word tonight I pray that this word will fall on good ground and that it will bring forth fruit Now, Father, I pray for Haley tonight and I pray for Melissa, her mother, and I'm asking you in Jesus name that you touch her. We're asking you, oh God, that you now let healing be the children's bread, as the scripture has said, and that this young lady's body begin to instantly be better. Even in this moment right now at 733 in the evening, I'm asking you that you touch her, that you heal her and that you give the mother strength, cause her to have peace even now. That passes all understanding. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. And now the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord turn his face and his favor in your direction. And the Lord give you peace in Jesus name. Amen.